Good morning, I'm Gary Bender. I'm a Emeritus Farm Advisor with the University of California Cooperative Extension in San Diego County. And we're gonna be talking about our high density grove today. And in my, in the, behind me here, we have a, t a small avocado uh, planting here. Uh, it's this Hass avocado on Dusa rootstock. We chose Dusa uh, because it's our, currently our best uh, rootstock for resistance to Phytophthora root rot. And this ranch has Phytophthora on the ranch, so we didn't want to uh, have it spread into our grove here. So this is a high density. We're trying out uh, on 10 by 10 spacing. We're trying to keep them about eight feet high. And uh, Hass does not want to grow like that. So it's a constant uh, pruning and touch up pruning to keep these trees in their shape. We'd like to have a, uh, look like a, a fat Christmas tree shape where we have leaves all the way down to the, almost to the soil. And we'd like to keep a space in between the trees. Now, behind me, um, we did not prune last year. I wanted to show you what a non-pruned grove eventually looks like. It gets very crowded and they're pretty high. They need to be t uh, brought down again. And uh, we are in the process of picking the fruit right now. And when that gets done, we hope to prune immediately because it's here, it's, it's right now it's in March and uh, they'll still have flowering in April. We'll get fruit set after we uh, harvest. Okay, so next we're gonna look at the, the uh, trial. This was a pruning trial, and we'll show that to you coming up next. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the pruning trial. It's a, it's a pruning, set up as a pruning trial to compare an all around pruning. Uh, and uh, we're topping at seven feet. They quickly grow back up to eight feet, but that's the range we're trying to keep them in. And we're comparing to the all sides prune to the, over here in the white, we were, we we're doing alternate side pruning. We started off pruning uh, in the third year on the southwest side, next year on the northeast side, back to the southwest side, and then the following year on the, on the northeast side. So we went back and forth and back and forth. And the reason for that is to preserve as much fruiting wood on um, a side of the tree as possible and still keep the tree pruned. As it turned out, uh, when we compared the yield between the two styles at the end of the trial, uh, almost exactly the same amount of yield. We did save some labor in pruning on the alternate side, but uh, it, was, it wasn't much difference between the two styles. Now on the white here, uh, this is, uh, you can see we have a Zutano in the middle of a nine of eight Hass trees. So it's, these are kind of nine tree units spread throughout this, this trial. And we have quite a few bees over here and they'll come in and in the morning, the Hass flowers will be female and the Zutano flowers, which is a bee flower type tree, will be male. So all the bee has to do is hit a flower on the Zutano, bounce over to a Zutano, to the Hass flower. And then of course they bounce around to several Hass flowers and hopefully those flowers will be pollinated, but they have the best chance to be pollinated. And we have the same thing over here in this style, nine tree units with a Zutano in the middle. Now, if we look over to this side, this is the lamb Hass side. We were comparing Hass to lamb Hass, and it's set up in the same uh, method. We were comparing two styles of pruning. We were hoping to uh, get better yield on the lamb Hass and of course that is a little bit later fruit that'll be harvested in may june july august so it's a it's a summer fruit and if you harvest earlier than that it'll be kind of rubbery and it won't it will not be edible okay now we're going to look at our yield through the years on our high density trial here compared to the california average yield uh, this is in 2015 this is uh they were planted in 2012 in august of 2012 so this will be uh, pretty much our first harvest. We got a little over 13,000 pounds per acre on our trial of Hass. Uh, we, we measured the Zootonals, but it's not presented in this chart here. And then we have over here the next year, 25,000 pounds per acre. In 2017, we were back down to 5,100 pounds, but we, the whole state was in an off year. And we were also in an off year because of alternate bearing problems, it looked like but there was a lot of heat in California that caused this damage here. And then in 2018, uh, back up to a little over 21,000 pounds per acre. During that four year period, we averaged 16,000 pounds per acre on our high density. And uh, we were doing pretty darn good. In our 
I don't, I'm not presenting the lamb has data here, but we averaged about 11,000 pounds per acre on the lamb has side of the trial. So we're very help, hopeful that this is going to be a good method for growers to continue on to get better, high, higher yields. They just have to put more energy into pruning. But we did do an economic study of this whole situation and we did make a profit on all these years except for uh, that year in 2017. Okay, next we're gonna walk into the grove and uh, we'll show you uh, what we're gonna be doing with pruning and some of the fruit has been size picked already. Uh, they picked the eight ounce fruit, but they've left a lot of the smaller fruit in here to size up. Okay, we've, as, you, as you can see, we have not pruned this last year. And what happened is all, all the lower branches got shaded and the leaves fell off. So we're gain, gaining height here. We're eventually gonna have all, all our fruit very high up in the tree. We want to keep it low because we can, if we do that, we can all uh, pick from the ground without ladders. You can see on the outside of the canopy, it's starting to go into flowering here. And uh, so they need to be pruned. And let's just walk in here just a little bit farther. So we, we are, we're going to be pruning on both sides here after we get things harvested. Uh, like I said, we'd like to have this look like a fat Christmas tree. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to start removing some branches. So I would probably go in here and uh, pick a branch here, just remove the whole branch and uh, look around. So maybe I'd probably, I might take off three or four branches all the way down to the trunk. And in fact, in this particular case, we have three main scaffold branches coming out here. I might just take off one whole scaffold branch and uh, then we'll shorten the tree. And when that happens, you get a lot of, when the sun can hit the, the trunk, you get a lot of small grow, new leaves and that'll start to fill in the space here. Okay, let's walk down a little farther. So you can see how crowded it is in here. Uh, you can see some fruit on the trees over here. These are the smaller fruit uh, when they, possibly grow a little bit bigger and the price comes up, the grower will come in here and strip pick. And then after that, like I said, we'll come in here and remove some main branches, shorten the height of the tree, and we'll eventually get this back into a fat Christmas tree shape. Okay, as I said earlier, we have eight Hass trees around a Zutano, and that's because we want a better cross-pollination than we usually get here. Um, the question is, do we have too many Zutanos in this grove and uh, we, we don't know for sure, but uh, we know for sure that when the Hass flowers are female in the morning, the uh, Zutanos will be male in the morning, you know, and the bees. We have a lot of bees out here also. Bees can very easily just hit the Zutano, hit the Hass, and then the Hass is pollinated. So, but one of the problems with Zutano, they grow very fast, they grow upright, and we need to keep the height down. Uh, this tree here was just about almost 14, 15 feet high. And we had to come in here earlier and, and top these trees a little bit. You can see this, uh, this uh, branch up here. Um, they topped them right there and they brought out about half the height of this tree. So that'll help uh, with the shading of the neighboring hass. We gotta really keep these Zutanos down. All we want really are flowers. The Zutano fruit aren't worth very much, and a lot of times the packing houses won't take them. So, but we are increasing our pollination, and it really helped on our yield. Can I prove that? Not quite, because we don't have a block of pure Hass without the Zutanos. Um, but eventually, we'll probably be doing another trial very sim similar to this with just pure Hass and no Zutanos. I'd really like to try that out. Okay, behind me are quite a few beehives. Uh, they just came in from uh, pollinating almonds up in Tulare County and just in time for the avocado flowering. But one of the things I wanted to show you is we have a little pool of water here for them to get their water. And they put some water plants in here so they don't have to go all the way down to the reservoir to get some water. I think that's an important thing to do when you've got beehives. Okay, we're in the lamb house side of the trial. It's the same situation. We have eight lamb hass around a Zutano because lamb hass are A flowers, Zutanos are B flowers. 
Uh, th this is an interesting tree. We, we, we had it here because we thought it might be more productive than our hass, but it actually is less productive. Uh, not too bad though. Uh, the leaves look a little different. They look like they're narrow, long. Actually, they're they kind of funny. They kind of curl and they look like they're wilting, but they're not wilting. It's just a different look to this tree. Now, lamb hass will not be ready to harvest until uh, May, June, July, you know, sometimes into August. So uh, they, they're later than hass and you don't want to pick them too early. But they also set fruit in clusters. I want to show you a cluster of, of lamb hass down here. They get a lot of fruit in clusters. And sometimes the branches are too low and, and the fruit are touching the ground. You can't have the fruit touching the ground anymore because of food safety laws. So they, this is okay. Oops, I just pulled one off. This is okay, but if they're touching the ground, you're not allowed to harvest those. So I hope you've learned a little bit uh, about our trial today and it's being very productive. We're just gonna have to get in here in a little while and do some heavy pruning. Okay, thank you very much.